Hey, this is Mr. W. Welcome to Thinking Biologically. In this video, we're going to look at a lab that demonstrates one of the key properties of membranes, selective permeability. Cell membranes are selectively permeable, just like this coffee filter. When you make coffee, you use the filter to keep out the grounds and to let the dissolved coffee pass through. And that's what selective permeability is. It's a membrane's ability to allow some things to pass through, but not others. This demonstration of selective permeability uses dialysis tubing. When people have kidney problems, they might have to go to a dialysis center where their blood will be artificially filtered. The toxins get removed and the good stuff is retained. It's all about selective permeability. All that I want to say about dialysis tubing for now is that it's selectively permeable. It's going to be permeable to some of the substances we're experimenting with in this demonstration, but not to others. I'm going to tie off one end of the tube to make it into a bag. I'm filling the bag with a solution that contains both fructose and starch. Starch is a polysaccharide and fructose is a monosaccharide. I'm sealing the bag by tying the other end and I'm placing it into a cup of water. Into that cup, I'm going to add about 50 drops of iodine solution. I'm going to pour off a bit of the solution in the cup into this test tube. The test tube is made of glass, which is an impermeable barrier. In other words, this test tube is allowing us to preserve the initial contents of the solution in the cup. And then I'm going to set it aside. What I'd like you to do now is to make a prediction. Based on what you know about iodine, fructose, and starch, and knowing that dialysis tubing is going to be permeable to some of these substances and not to others, what do you think is going to happen to the system if we let it sit for a while? So pause the video, write down what you think, and then come on back. Let's see what's going on. We've had a color change inside the bag. The original color of the starch fructose solution was white, and now it's turned purple. To understand that, let's take a look at this. If you combine starch solution and iodine, the color turns blackish purple. Notice that the color changes inside the dialysis bag, but not in the cup. In other words, the iodine, which was outside the bag, somehow interacted with the starch inside the bag to turn it black. Also notice that when we use this test strip to test for fructose in the cup, we get a positive result. Remember the setup. There was no fructose in the solution in the cup at the start of the experiment, but there is now. Finally, let's compare the color of the iodine solution in the cup to the color in the test tube. Here's a table summarizing the results. This time, instead of predicting, I'd like you to explain. The dialysis tubing is selectively permeable. What's it selectively permeable to? Make a claim and support it with evidence. Hit pause, write down what you think, and then hit play for my explanation. First of all, a key process at work in this lab is diffusion. At the start of this experiment, starch and fructose were in higher concentration inside the bag than outside. So we'd expect these substances to flow down their concentration gradients from where they are inside the bag to where they're not outside the bag. The iodine, by contrast, was in higher concentration outside the bag than inside the bag. And we'd expect the iodine to flow down its concentration gradient and enter the bag. The bag is not permeable to starch. We know that because when starch and iodine meet, the solution turns this purple, black, bluish color. But that color change is only seen inside the bag. If the bag was permeable to starch, we'd see that color change outside the bag, and we don't. So the starch couldn't diffuse down its concentration gradient. It was stuck inside the bag. On the other hand, the iodine did diffuse from the cup into the bag. That's why there was a color change inside the bag. So we can conclude that the dialysis tubing is permeable to iodine. And there's another thing about the iodine that we can explain. The color of the solution in the cup is now noticeably lighter than its original color. Why? Because the iodine's trip into the bag is a one-way journey. When the iodine enters the bag, it chemically reacts with the starch, which is the reason for the color change. Those iodine ions are now linked to the starch molecules, and they're not coming out. So the overall concentration of iodine in the cup is now less than it was at the start of the experiment. Fructose was also able to diffuse through the bag and enter the solution in the cup. We know that because we were able to detect the presence of fructose through the test strip. 
So the dialysis tubing is permeable to fructose and iodine, but not starch. Why? Thinking biologically means thinking on a molecular level. So let's do that. On a molecular level, the dialysis membrane has tiny pores that some molecules can pass through, but not others. That's how it works. Starch, which is a polysaccharide, is way too big to pass through these pores. Fructose, a monosaccharide, is much smaller, small enough to be able to pass through. And what's true of fructose, a monosaccharide composed of 24 atoms, is also true of iodine, a single ion. I like to imagine myself being the size of a molecule of starch. On that scale, the dialysis tubing would be like a chain link fence, too big for a starchy molecule my size to pass through. On that scale, the fructose is like a ping pong ball, which can easily pass through a chain link fence, and the iodine is like a marble, which can pass through the fence even more easily. Why is this important? What we've done in this lab is to demonstrate the properties of a selectively permeable boundary. And while the structure of a cell membrane is completely different from this dialysis tubing, the membrane is also a selectively permeable boundary. It lets some things pass through, but not others. And that selective permeability is really the basis of all living systems. Got any questions? Please leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, please hit the like button and please subscribe to Science Music Videos. If you want to learn more about membranes, check out my tutorials about membranes on sciencemusicvideos.com and my related videos, which you can access both on my website and on YouTube. All you need to do to access the tutorials on sciencemusicvideos.com is sign up so you can get that free trial subscription. Thank you so much. C double L M B R A N E control and transport selective permeability phospholipids, carbohydrates, proteins, and cholesterol. The fluid mosaic by layer in a solid.